this. Clearly. Oh no, that made it worse. Okay. It's time for a, I think it's time for another quarantine bang trim. <laughs> Sorry, Ash, you'll fix it later. <laughs>episode 87 of the Nicole Stitches podcast. I am a left-handed crocheter, knitter, and general crafter coming to you from Northern Virginia where I work and live with my husband, our cat Webster, and our kitten Birdie. You can keep up with me on Instagram at Nicole SP Designs, on Ravelry as she writes things, on Pinterest at NSP Designs, and in my shop nspdesigns.com where I make and sell handmade project bags, notions pouches, and other fiber accessories as well as original crochet patterns. There's a Ravelry group for the podcast and you can go there to find a get to know us thread where you can introduce yourself and get to know other members of the group, a QA and a thread where you can leave me questions that I'll answer in an upcoming video, and it's where you'll find the monthly pattern giveaway thread where you can enter to win a pattern of your choice that was featured on the podcast in the preceding month. Welcome back, welcome back. This again might be a little bit of a short episode but I do have some exciting stuff to talk about so we'll see how it goes. Um, if you are new, hi, welcome, and if you're a turn viewer, thank you so much for coming back. I have some coffee here to get through this video. It is a little bit of a dreary day. It's Thursday, April 23rd. Um, it has been a little bit chilly again this week. We had kind of consistently been getting into some warmer weather, but it's been cooler this week, and today is just kind of gray. Um, I was feeling drowsy as I started the video, so I decided to make coffee. This is... Um, ignore the coffee drips, please. This is not my first cup today. <laughs> this is one of my favorite mugs. It is from Strand Books, which is um, a bookstore, it's pretty well known, that is in New York City, which is my favorite place. Um, and every time I'm in New York, or almost every time, I like to visit Strand. Um, they are an independent bookstore. They've been around a really long time, and I really love them. And this is just a bunch of literary superheroes. Um, that I really love. We've got Shakespeare, we've got my girl Jane Austen, we've got Oscar Wilde over here. You know, some some greats. Uh, so I have a coffee to keep me going and we're gonna get started. I have a finished object. You can probably guess what it is. I have some progress and I just have some updates for you. So I will get things underway. First, before I, before I get into things uh, here, both the cats are in here with me and Birdie is <laughs> Birdie is currently upside down on a pile of tissue, uh, like brown packing paper. Um, I don't know what it is about this brown paper that sometimes comes in packages, but both of the cats love it. Anytime we get it in a package, they like come forward immediately and they take it and they just love to smack it and crunch it and roll around on it and... It ends up on our floor <laughs> for like days. It, I always feel a little self-conscious if people come over. I mean, no one's coming over right now, but uh, historically I have felt a little self-conscious if people have come over because it just looks like we have trash on the floor and technically we do, but what they don't understand <laughs> is that it is a cat toy. It is getting a new life as a cat toy for a few days. Um, they like it until the paper doesn't crinkle anymore when they crunch it under their paws and then it's, then it's finally trash. So if you hear that rustling sound, there was a little bit in the beginning during my intro stuff, if you heard that, that was Birdie playing with some packing paper. Uh, so anyway, I promise I recycle the paper when they're done. It goes right in our recycling bag with our bottles and cans. But um, yeah, and Webster has just come in here to hunker down in the window seat on a pillow as well. So we're going to get things going. This is the Cozy Classic Raglan by Jessie Mae Designs. Um, I have a few of her patterns either in my library or in my wish list on Ravelry. Um, but this is the first one that I've made and I love this. I really like how it came out. The pattern was very clear. It is a great beginner pattern um, because it is very straightforward. It is a top down raglan, which means you did it from the collar downward, which makes it super easy to try on as you go and make sure that everything looks good. Um, you can really customize how long you want your waist to be. So most of the jeans that I own at this point are high-waisted mom jeans. The higher waist I can get, the better. Raise my jeans to the sky. I will pull up my jeans right up to my armpits and I will not be mad about it. I am all about 
<laughs> the high waisted jeans lately. So um, I made this uh, a little bit shorter. Um, like it's not a full sweater length, it is cropped um, to accommodate that because that's my recent aesthetic. Um, and I love it. I also knit the sleeves just a little bit short because I tend to do this with my sleeves of sweaters. I will kind of scooch them up to my elbow. So if I am knitting my own sweaters, I rarely will knit them all the way down to the wrist anymore because I know that I do this. I will usually get to like maybe here and then I'll stop and scoot. Um, <laughs> I might stretch them a little bit when I'm blocking so they technically are the correct length, but you know, no one's gonna know but me. Um, so anyway, this is this is my finished sweater. I knit this in uh, Knit Picks Bare Aristo yarn, which is their lace weight yarn. This is a um, sweater that is made to be knit in one strand of figuring weight yarn and one strand of lace weight held together, or uh, DK one strand of DK weight yarn on its own. It is a DK weight gauge. For the fingering weight yarn, I used Knit Picks Bare Aristo. And what did I just say? For the lace weight yarn, I used Knit Picks Bare Aristo. For the fingering weight yarn, I used um, La Bienne Aimee Singles, which is their single ply base. Uh, it's a fingering weight yarn in the colorway Rose Quartz, which you can see here. This I bought on my honeymoon in Paris. We went to La Bienne Aimee, which was like heaven for me. I was so excited about that. And I brought home three skeins. And as you can see, I have a pretty decent amount left. This is my third skein that I cracked into. But I also have this of the second skein and just a little bit of another skein. So this is how much I have left. So I have to weigh this on my kitchen scale and see how many grams is left here. But it is possible that, that this was a two skein sweater project for me, which is wild. That blows my mind. I would never would have imagined that I could knit a sweater to fit me with two skeins of fingering weight yarn. Now I may be like, uh, this may not be exactly a full skein, so maybe I would have needed a third one, but like clearly not much just because look how much yarn is left here. Um, so I did do helical knitting for this sweater. I'm sure you recall if you've been here before. So for most, most of the sweater, I was alternating these two skeins and then I eventually pulled in this one and I alternated between these two for a bit just to tie this one in. Um, and so that all the colors would blend nicely together if I did run out of something and need to swap it in. Um, last week I said that I was running out of my lace weight yarn. I had bought a third skein. I only had two on hand and I had bought a third skein because I thought I was going to run out and I said that I would be really surprised if I didn't. Well, guess who's surprised because I have this much Aristo left. And uh, this is all from what I already had. I did not have to break into the third skein at all. And it is doing what it does and sticking to itself. As you can see here, um, it is kind of bunching up and sticking to itself because it has that sticky halo, which is not my favorite thing. So I'm probably going to wrestle with this at some point and get it all down into one ball. Um, but I do have that little bit of each of the two cakes that I had left left again. <laughs> um, and I have the third skein that I had purchased as backup and didn't even need to crack into. So that will be nice to have on hand for another project where you're directed to pair a strand of lace with a strand of fingering if I want to do that. Um, it does mean that I will have to struggle through uh, caking the skein, which is not my favorite thing, like I said last week, but it is what it is. I am just going to tuck that awkward little side bang piece behind my glasses because it's really bugging me. There we go. I need to trim my bangs again today. Um, and that is my sweater. I love this. This is absolutely something that I could see myself knitting again, either um, with fingering weight held with lace weight like I did this time, or if I find a DK weight yarn that I really love. I mean, I would love to just have some like solid color sweaters in my wardrobe. I We know that I am the unofficial brand ambassador for Knit Picks Swish DK. <laughs> I'm not actually a brand ambassador. I just love Knit Pick Swish DK very passionately. I could absolutely see myself picking just a color of that, grabbing a few skeins and knitting myself a nice plain, another cozy classic raglan and having a great time with it or doing another one in like a beautiful hand dyed yarn. Um, so it's just a really enjoyable 
piece. I learned um, the raglan increase here, the stitch detail is a new kind of increase that I had not done before that I learned for the sweater. I did do it wrong the first few times. So that is something that I just um, blocked out a little bit and now I cover it with my hair. <laughs> Nobody has to know. Um, but it was really like nice and intuitive once I got the hang of it and it adds a nice detail and it's just, it's beautiful. Um, I did not do the pattern calls for a tubular cast on for the neckline and I think it might call for a tubular bind off for the hem. I don't remember. It definitely wants tubular to cast on. I didn't do that because I was not in the mood to learn that at the time. Um, but I still love this and maybe next time if I knit this again, I will decide to learn that. You never know. Who can say? So that out of the way, I will move on to my active works in progress now that are not yet done. This one is a project that's been around for a while now. You saw it last week. I brought it back. Uh, and I worked on it a lot again this past week. It's just, I'm just really in the mood for it, it seems. This is The Ephemeris by Deborah Gerhard. And you can see my progress. Here is where I was last week. So you can see I've worked my way through one repeat of this diamond motif. Um, if you look down here, the first time it's done, you do that twice. So I have done the first time and I will do it a second time before I move on. I am knitting this in Hazel Knits Artisan Sock in the color Hoppy Blonde and Verdigris is the blue. Um, I really love this yarn. It feels so nice and squishy. It's got a nice um, like flexibility stretch to it. So I think it's going to block out really nicely and like grow a lot, which will be beautiful. And I'm really liking this. Like I said last week, the pattern is not the easiest for me to follow. I think there are probably some things that could have been phrased more clearly, or it's just, it just, my brain, it, it, it does not gel what, very well for my brain and the way that I like to read patterns and knit, if that makes sense. Um, the pattern is, a, it's a beautiful piece and I love it and I don't want to knock the designer. It's just that that pattern is not written in my ideal way as a knitter, but I'm getting by and, you know, I'm, I'm progressing to a place of, of near completion. I'm probably about two thirds done, if not more at this point. And I'm just, I'm, I'm getting through it. I'm, I'm, I'm getting through it. I'm making my way. So not too many complaints. This has been sitting by the couch again for my, my TV knitting. And I've been knitting on it in the evenings too, before I go to sleep. Um, trying to, trying to get it done. I've been, in, I've just been in the mood for it lately. I had not felt like knitting it in a really long time, as I'm sure some of you noticed, but uh, it's back. And I think maybe this time it's here to stay until it's done. We'll see. Next is the um, Belle Isle sweater by Nadia Creton Lechon, I think. You, I really do butcher French pronunciation sometimes. I speak French. I just, I think sometimes I just get self-conscious and I inhibit my own pronunciation success. Does that make sense? I, I remember on the honeymoon when we went to Paris, um, we started in Paris. I do speak some French. I'm not like great. Like I'm not totally conversant or fluent or anything, but I can kind of struggle my way through. Um, and I would... <laughs> I would know how to ask for something at like a cafe or whatever. And so I would, I would order in French because I know that from what I understand, from what I've been told <laughs> is that the culture in Paris is that, um, they understand that tourists are gonna like speak other languages, especially like English speaking tourists are going to speak English, but they will appreciate it. If you at least like try to speak French, they will be, they, they'll appreciate that, you know? Um, and <laughs> And so I, I tried, <laughs> I would try to speak French because I kind of can. And, uh, the problem with that is that I would start a conversation with them in French. And so then some people would want to continue it and I would just run out of my knowledge. I would have spent my French language skills at that point. I would have to be like, je ne parle pas français, je suis américaine. It was a whole thing. Anyway, the point is I do speak French. Je parle un peu de français. Um, mais je, je parle anglaise uh, most of the time. What I said was I speak a little bit of French, but I speak English most of the time. <laughs> je suis américaine. Uh, and so I'm very sorry, Nadia, if I have completely butchered your last name, but please know that I really genuinely would like to do it correctly. You know, I think this is not my first coffee of the day and I think it's getting to me. Anyway, this is the Belle Isle cardigan. <laughs> 
Uh, I am knitting this in Knit Picks Mighty Stitch Worsted in the color silver. And here's where I was last week. Here's where I was last week. This is my Pizza Progress Keeper from Pitter Patter Polymer on Etsy. And you can see, here's where I am now. This is the front, one of the front panels of the cardigan. You can see the cables are actually starting to take shape now. Last week I had just begun a cable. You could barely tell it was there. And now you can see them really starting to, um, to form. So let me try and get this arranged correctly here. This is the front of the sweater. It will be sleeve sleeve. And this is the neckline that was done with a provisional cast on. That's why there's yellow here. Um, so I'm not sticking this. This is not attached. This is the, uh, this is a back and forth pattern, but this is my progress. I am loving this. Uh, like I said last week, I'm knitting this at a gauge that is larger than what the pattern calls for. The pattern calls for sport weight yarn and smaller needles. I am knitting this with worsted weight yarn and size eight because that's the size that I like to use with this particular yarn. Um, and I am knitting the smallest size, which I believe is three months. And um, But it's gonna come out a little bit bigger because my gauge is bigger. So it might come out closer to the six month size. So it looks like it's gonna be a decent size. This definitely doesn't look like it's gonna be a newborn um, sweater. I'm not positive how big babies are, but this is definitely gonna be bigger than a newborn size. I think this is gonna be at least six months. So we'll see. Again, the baby that this is intended for is still bacon. Um, baby's not gonna come until June and certainly won't need a cardigan then. So I am intentionally making the size a little bit bigger, but I am really liking this. Um, I am working the cables uh, really easily. It's just a two, I think it's technically a four stitch cable, but you're only ever taking two stitches off your needles and moving them around at a time. Uh, and like I said last week, some people are able to do that without even using a cable needle. They can just drop them and do their cable on their own. I do like to have a cable needle because that's just how I function. Um, I actually couldn't find a cable needle when I was putting together my notions pouch for this bag. So I'm just using my, um, tapestry needle that I would use to weave in ends when I'm finished. I'm just using that to hold the stitches and then I put it back and it's, it works great. Small, fits in the stitches, keeps them from dropping. You know, no complaints. Use what you have on hand. I have previously used um, a crochet hook and a safety pin. Sometimes we have to be resourceful. And that is the extent of my update this week. I am working on a cross stitch project for my niece. I've shown that for the past few weeks. It is the Mario level birth record by Nerd Pillow, but I have barely stitched on it at all this week. It's like a negligible amount that you wouldn't even notice I did anything, so it's not worth it for me to show you. Um, but that is technically still, it's still happening. I just haven't crossed it much this week. Um, but I do have, so I don't have a new in my queue for you this week. I've got a sticky note where I've written down like two things, but I'd like to wait until I have kind of a bigger group. I like to do usually anywhere between three and five patterns for you. I know last week I did two, but I kind of wish that I had waited and just done four this week. The point is I do have some things that I've taken note of, but I will show you next week when maybe I have more. But I do have a little shop update for you. And before that, I have a stash acquisition to share with you, which is a first. I haven't, I don't think I've shown you a stash acquisition since I got back from my honeymoon. That was the last time I think I really treated myself to some hand-dyed yarn, unless I am mistaken. But here's what happened. Uh, last week or the week before, I had a crappy day. <laughs> Um, I was, I had a, uh, an appointment that did not go well. Um, it went very badly for me. I'm, everything's fine. Everyone's fine and healthy. Um, it was a specialist doctor's appointment and everything was fine. Um, I didn't put anybody at risk by going. I wore masks and everyone at the office wore masks and everything's fine. The point is, um, I had this appointment and it didn't go well and I came home very angry. Um, just being a woman and getting anyone to believe that you know about your body is a very frustrating process. <laughs> Let's just leave it there. Um, I was very frustrated when I got home and I decided to treat myself to some retail therapy, which I hadn't done in a long time. But right now, um, I know many people are concerned about how a lot of small handmade, especially businesses are going to get by um, during this period where we were all staying in and, you know, brick and mortar locations are closed and stuff like that. Um, and so I have been trying to be cognizant of that and do what I can, what small things I can to support these small businesses that I love, uh, especially woman owned businesses um, and like local businesses and stuff. 
So I decided I was in the mood to get some yarn. And I decided that if I was going to do this and I was going to let myself have a retail therapy moment and treat myself to some yarn, I wanted to really make my money spent mean something. Um, not that it doesn't mean something whenever you spend it, but I wanted it to be really impactful to a small business that I love and that might be negatively impacted by the uh, quarantine, by the pandemic, in a much bigger way than like a, a really big business. Um, so I decided to go and look at the website of a yarn dyer that I spend a lot of time ogling, but I've not treated myself to in a long time because I was on a yarn diet. Um, I decided to support Neighborhood Fiber Co, which is a Baltimore based uh, indie dyer. They have a brick and mortar in Baltimore that in normal times you uh, can visit and shop. Um, and I all know that they would also do a lot of workshops, like yarn dyeing workshops and stuff. They're really just a really active part of their community. Um, if you're newish here, I haven't talked about it in a bit, but I actually lived in Baltimore for 10 years before moving here to Northern Virginia. Um, my husband was born and raised in Baltimore. I have a lot of family there. Both of our families still live in Baltimore. Um, so I wasn't, I wasn't born there, but I lived there for about 10 years. Um, and so, you know, we're, we're back in Baltimore or we, we would be, uh, pretty regularly. Um, and so Neighborhood Fiber Co. has always been on my radar and it's been a, sh a business that I've wanted to support. And I really wanted to support them now more than ever. Also, they make beautiful yarn. So I decided to, um, set myself up because there is a yarn, a shawl pattern that came out recently called the Olive Pink Shawl from Casa Pinka that I really, really liked. And I decided to set myself up to knit that. So that's probably going to go on my needles after I finish the ephemeris as my next shawl project. So I knew some colors from Neighborhood Fiber Co that I have always loved. And it just so happens that this base, which is rustic fingering, was on sale. I think they might be replacing it with another base. And so they're trying to clear out what they have. So yet again, even more reason <laughs> to treat myself to a bunch of yarn. Um, so I went online, the olive pink shawl calls for four colors. And so I picked four that looked like they would go nicely together and they arrived and I love them. So here they are. Many of the Neighborhood Fiber Co. colorways are named after places in Baltimore, um, neighborhoods, parts, different areas of the city, um, like landmarks and stuff like that. And then there's also, they also did a series named after artists. Um, I'm not sure if it's all artists that are from Baltimore and did work there or if it's just artists. Um, but so my, my colorways are kind of a mix of place names and artist names. So this one is called Sandy Point. It's got this beautiful range of colors here. And I really like this pop of bright pink at the top. This is Cross Street Market. It's a fun, like soft, dusty pinkish color. It's, it's reading a bit more orange on camera from what I can see. It kind of looks similar to the color of that bag right there and it is not. Um, maybe if I hold them up, you can see how different they are. That's kind of doing the trick, but not really. This is more like a dusty, a dusty coral or dusty peach color. It is not this bright orange, even though it kind of looks that way. Um, this is David Hess. It's this beautiful bluish gray. And then this is uh, Ward Circle. It's a bright blue. So I thought that these four colors would look really nice together as an olive pink. Um, I think, you know, this one kind of has these three colors in it. And so I thought they would all play nicely together. And I'm really excited about this. This made me feel really happy, both because I was treating myself to yarn after a bad day. <laughs> and also because I was able to support a small woman owned business that is um, not local to me now, but was local to me for a long time and is still part of a, is part of a community that I still care about and that is still important to me. So, um, that was, that's something that I'm trying to be more and more cognizant of during this time. Um, if I'm going to, if I want to buy a book and I want, I have to order online, I want to find, um, an independent bookstore. The, the independent bookstore that I love personally and is part of my community, um, doesn't have online ordering, so I can't unfortunately buy through them, but there are, Many independent bookstores um, that you can, you can call them up and order books. They have websites you can order through. There's also a website, I believe it's called bookshop.org and they have an interface where you can buy through them, but the proceeds will support 
the bookshop that you're trying to, the independent bookseller that you're trying to support, you just have to tell them who it is. You have to go on there and like search for the shop. A lot of bookstores, if they have that link through bookshop, they will make it available to you. So um, I didn't describe that very well, but Google bookshop.org, check out the website and you should probably be able to figure it out. The point is I'm trying to be cognizant right now um, of supporting businesses that might be jeopardized by the situation that we're in. A lot of people who own businesses are very concerned, especially if your businesses relied a lot on events, like a lot of um, fiber community businesses do, a lot of hand dyed yarn and, and things. Those businesses rely a lot on the money that they make from events, which are all getting canceled. So I'm trying to, you know, if I'm going to buy a certain thing, I look for a small business that I can support instead of going and buying it from like Target or something. Um, it's just one small way that I can spread positivity and be a better community member during this time. So uh, if you are also in the mood to engage in some retail therapy right now, I would suggest that you do the same. Plus I got some really pretty yarn out of it. So like, who's mad, you know? Um, on that note, I will share my shop update with you real quick. It's just one thing. I have a new fabric coming to the shop. Uh, these are the Mod Cats. I love these cats so much. There's like a mid-century modern flair to the design and I just love them. Um, they've got this aqua colored zipper for the bigger bags. Here's the inside. And then I have medium bags and project pouches. So you can have this kitty cat. These have a red zipper. I thought that was a fun, um, fun pop of color to add to the little pouches. So these are in the shop now. I have three of these and I have, I think, four of these. I wanna thank um, people who are supporting my shop right now. I know it's a precarious time for a lot of us and people wanna be cautious, but they also wanna support small businesses. So it just, it really, really means a lot to me when you choose to support me. And I'm really grateful for that. Um, don't forget that for the next few days until the end of the month, you can use the code SHAREYARN2020 in the shop. That'll be written out in the description below and you can get 20% off your order. Um, and uh, that is something that I extended through the end of the month, given these circumstances that we are all in right now. So I hope that people can enjoy that. Um, and that is my episode. So thank you so much for watching. I hope you had a good time. Uh, sorry, I got <laughs> Here at certain points. I think it's the afternoon coffee. Sometimes it's just how it is. Um, again, thanks so much for watching. I hope you have a great week and you're staying well, staying inside and washing your hands. Go for a walk if you can. Maintain your distance and all that stuff, but get outside and breathe the fresh air and the sun if you have the ability to. Um, remember that we are all doing this together. We're doing it for each other. It is a global community effort of trying to be kind to one another by staying home, um, staying inside, and um, I hope you have a, a really good week. Get lots of crafting done and I will see you next time. Bye.